tonight. Um, all started with Riley Gilliam. Uh, what an unbelievable start. Uh, five innings, only gave up one hit, one walk. Uh, pounded the strike zone, executed pitches, uh, worked fast, and thought he did, a, did an unbelievable job. Uh, and then our bullpen was really, really good. Schnell, uh, Clay Schmidt, and gave him an inning out of pen. Uh, felt like we needed to get him some mound work. Threw very well out of the pen. Um, very pleased to see Alex Bostic have a good inning for us out of the pen. And, and Pat Andrews finished uh, on a high note. You know, we only walked two batters tonight, and we made one error. And, and to be honest with you, the error was the only play he could have made. It's the only chance he had to make a play. That was a very tough hop uh, for Eli. Uh, so um, I thought defensively we played well. Uh, moved some guys around a little bit tonight. Tried some different things. Uh, I thought our energy level was really, really good. Very proud of our guys, how they bounced back. We've had a couple tough weekends. It's good to be back home. We played well at home. I uh, thought the energy was good. We were very positive and upbeat. Um, eight out of our nine starters had quality at bats tonight and scored runs. Eight out of nine starters scored runs, scored 12 runs on the night, had two big innings. So, you know, overall, I don't know if we could have played a better baseball game than we did tonight. And, you know, the, the thing that I was really, really impressed with was you know, we hit the end of those five runs, you know, early. You know, we strung five at-bats together uh, with hits um, or, you know, five guys in a row reached base via the hit. So, um, you know, I was very, very proud of our guys. So, um, it was a great game. Monty, with uh, Riley going tonight instead of Higginbotham and Schmidt getting names, is that going to change the rotation at all this weekend? Oh, uh, it could. It could. Um, you know, we're definitely going to – we were going to wait until after tonight and see kind of how – it would shake out. You know, we wanted to see how long Riley could go. Uh, we wanted to get him, if we could get him, you know, through five innings. We wanted to try to keep his pitch count to the point to where it's an option. You know, he threw 72. We would have liked to get him done at about 60 uh, to have the possibility of seeing if Sunday could work. But, you know, it's just something we'll have to look at. You know, we'll have to see how he feels. That's going to be four days rest. It's a possibility. Uh, but it's definitely it's going to be more based on how Riley feels, how he recovers, and uh, you know we'll look at all of our options uh, for Sunday going uh, moving forward. Something that I'm sure we'll all be discussing you know tomorrow in the office. But uh, do very very well. It's something you have to you have to look at. Um, and you know very pr proud of Clay. You know, Clay's first first opportunity out of the bullpen um, looked really really good. Was very aggressive in the strike zone. Stuff played up a little bit out of pen. Um, you know, we just wanted to see how he looked out of pen and get him some work. Um, and uh, I thought it was very beneficial for him. So, cool. would, as of right now, would Sunday be TBA? Uh, it, you know, as of right now, I would say yes. You know, I mean, we're going we're going to go all hands on deck and try to win this series this weekend. So, uh, you know, we've even we haven't made any decisions yet as far as what we're going to announce, but. You know, we could we could use the TBA simply because you know I don't like I, the only reason I, we use a TBA is because of the possibility of using a guy that we potentially could start out of the bullpen in the game before. Uh, so so yeah, um, we're going to talk about it as a coaching staff and try to make the best decision we can uh, to put our team in a position to win the series. How many cool. possible starters are you looking at for this weekend and the next few weekends at home? I mean, are you back to the drawing board for trying to find a rotation? Well, we know that, I mean, if you look at it, we know that Barnes, we know that Barnes, Eubanks, Schmidt all can start. Uh, you know, Riley now has had two really good starts, so he's an option. Um, you know, another guy that, that is an option who um, has had two starts for us, has thrown well out of the pen is Schnell. You know, he's an option as well. So, I mean, we're going to, I think the key for us right now is if you look at our team, uh, and, and where our areas that we've struggled in when it comes to pitching has been early in the ball game. Our, our issues haven't necessarily been late in the ball game. They've been early in the ball game. So, you know, we're trying. We're going to try to make a decision as to if we can get through game one and try to use whoever we have to use to win game one, and whoever the best available starter is, is uh, you know, is the option for game two. I mean, we're trying to win league games. So right now, it's. And we're going to look at all our options and try to decide what we think is best. And we haven't done that, you know, yet. We've talked about it. Trust me, we've talked about all the different scenarios we could possibly use, but we haven't made a decision. And we couldn't make a decision on what we're going to do for the weekend until we saw tonight's game. And we wanted to see how Riley would throw as a starter. We wanted to see what Clayton looked like out of the pen. 
You know, I never want to put a player in a position to do something where it's a pitching role or a position player role without trying it in a game first and seeing how it looks. So, uh, so we definitely have a lot of a lot of things to discuss and try to figure out what we feel like is best for our team. Going back to that five run first, did, after the tough weekend, do you felt like that kind of gave the guys a chance to just exhale and, and, and get back to having fun playing baseball? Um, you know, I, I think that you know the key for us. Was you know was obviously just just trying to string those at bats together, um, and when we got runners uh, in scoring position, uh, you know Oki comes up you know with a two strike hit, and then you know West gets a base hit to right, and then Reed comes up with a big double, scores a couple runs. It's great to see Reed you know there. We need Reed, Reed needed a hit there. Uh, Chris Williams you know with a double to left, and you know we just kept that inning going. We almost got everybody. Um, you know, through the lineup, or maybe we did. I can't. I don't know if we got all nine guys in the first inning through there or not. I think we did. Uh, but um, you know, it was great to see us do that. We needed a big inning of offense, and you know, as you could tell, after that, we really relaxed and swung the bats pretty well, and gained a lot of confidence after that first inning. So it was big for us. Talk about moving Beer in front of Loki. Yeah, there's there's a reason for that. You know, we obviously wanted to. You, know, you just look at the numbers and. I think you know we all realized that over the last couple of weekends we struggled to hit with runners in scoring position, and one guy that does hit well in our lineup with runners in scoring position is Oki. You know we 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 wanted to put Oki in front of Beer, you know, simply because Oki it you know it protects him a little bit, and gets him on base uh, with Beer coming up, and now you know we feel like we needed to flip that a little bit and put Beer in front of him because Oki does hit well with runners in scoring position, and it, it kind of forces them a little bit to where they have to pitch to set some. Coach, you dropped the first two at Louisville, and then you battled like crazy and was another heartbreaker walk off in the ninth inning on Sunday, and then you get the response that you got today. How, 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 does, how does the mental toughness and resilience of this team compare to some of the teams you've had? I think, uh, you know, it, it, this team this team definitely shows some resiliency and some mental toughness. I mean, we've had we've had some some tough losses. We've had some losses where we didn't play well. We've had some stretches where we didn't play well. But then our team will come out and, and do what they did tonight. So I think the key for our ball club is they believe. You know, they believe they're a good team. You know, they know that they're, they've gone through stretches where they haven't played well and haven't played to the best of their ability. Uh, and it's a process. It's something that as coaches and as players, we have to work on together. And it's my job to make sure that our guys, you know, stay upbeat and positive and, and look at what, what do we do well? What are the things that we are doing well even when we're not playing well, when we're not winning? And um, I think that's the biggest thing. I think the guys know that I've got their back. You know, I think that's the main thing as, as a head coach. You know, you have to make sure that your players understand it. I've got your back. If you go out and you compete as hard as you can, play as hard as you can and play together, regardless of what happens, I've got your back. Um, you know, and, and our guys do that. You know, our guys, again, you know, we've went through some tough stretches, but, you know, I've got our players back. and. And I think they respond well, you know, anytime, you know, I've had to challenge them or, or we go over anything that we need to do better, they do everything they can to, to do it. So it's a coachable group of players. It's a really fun group of players to coach. Um, so, and I'm proud of them, you know, and, and hopefully we can use tonight's game to get us some momentum going into the weekend. But as you know, in baseball, I mean, Georgia is a good club. They just beat South Carolina last weekend, two out of three. You know, baseball, the momentum of the game is all dictated by a starting pitcher. And, you know, Riley gave us that momentum that we needed after, you know, having a tough weekend. You know, we needed Riley to give us a good start, you know, and, and he did that. He provided with us the, with the positive momentum that we needed to win this ball game. Speaking of, of momentum, 12 of the previous 16 were on the road. Now you get 13 at home. How important is it to take charge in this homestand with, with this heading into the stretch run? Well, one of the best things that could have happened to us, you know, going through as tough a stretch as we've went through as a team was to be at home. <laughs> you know, to be at home now for the next, you know, 13 games, I believe it is. And, um, you know, our guys are very comfortable at home. We play well at home. The crowd here uh, helps our ball club. Uh, our guys believe, you know, that they're a really good club at home. So it's big for us. We, we need to be at home. And it, it couldn't have come at a better time, you know, a, after being on the road back-to-back -back weekends. and. And not playing our best baseball, uh, it's obviously good for our club to be at home. Coach, your first military appreciation day at Clemson, if you just talk about how special that is to you and uh, how unique that is. Well, uh, you know, we, we appreciate and respect, uh, you know, what uh, the armed forces do for our country. 
And, uh, you know, I have relatives that, that serve in the military, uh, have a long history of family that has served in the military. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm very proud. I have my grandfather's dog tags in my office. Uh, I have a rug that I framed on my office wall that a cousin of mine who was in Afghanistan serving a tour had handmade for me when I got the job. So, I mean, you know, I've got a family history of, of, of military and, and family members in the military. So, you know, we appreciate, um, you know, what they do for our country uh, to, you know, protect us and, uh, and, and, and everything that they do for us. So, uh, you know, it was great to see tonight. Um, and uh, heck, we played pretty good in the in the camo. Maybe we need to break it out into the regular <laughs> rotation. My ten and zero start to, in midweek games this year. Has there been any particular mindset or approach that you and your team have taken into midweek games? I think the you know just the approach is is that you know the midweek games are important, and that um, you know we're trying to do everything we can to put our team in a position to get into the postseason at the end of the year. And what you do in the middle of the week is very very important. Um, so I, I think that's the big thing is just understanding that every game's important, every game's a resume builder, and uh, that, that's really it. Thank you, Coach. Yeah.